This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Ease, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery. If you want top quality legal cannabis products that are properly tested, labeled, and packaged, brought right to your door in less than an hour, and you live in a part of California where Ease is active, you can just open up Ease.com to get your order in, assuming it's during the hours where legal marijuana delivery is allowed. That's because following all relevant state cannabis laws and regulations is just how Ease rolls. Ease's customers benefit from that because of the higher quality standards and customer experience enjoyed by everyone who places an order through Ease.com, spelled E-A-Z-E. From basic flour to pre-rolls and from edibles to concentrates, when you want top quality legal marijuana products delivered right to you in California, you just need to open up Ease.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Monday, June 4th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 503 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story this week starts us off in Michigan, where tomorrow is an interesting day for the state's lawmakers, who will either vote to approve a piece of legislation legalizing adult use marijuana or let the decision fall to Michigan voters to decide on in November. We've been tracking this storyline for a while now as Michigan GOP leaders are desperate to keep progressive minded voters from the polls in the fall and as a result are considering a move to preempt the marijuana adult use citizen initiative by passing a legalization law themselves. Late last week, a bill was passed out of the state Senate to do just that and faces a deadline of tomorrow to be voted through by the state House. Open up Michigan Live for a good write-up on this one, which I'm sure will be popping back up later in the week. However, things fall today and tomorrow. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. Kyle Yeager over Marijuana Moment grabs our second top story of the day with his pickup of a recently released poll from researchers at the University of Michigan that finds that the support for adult use legalization among young people to be at an all-time high. On Friday, the latest results of the survey monitoring the youth was released and showed that just under half of all 12th graders believe that adult use marijuana should be legal. Kyle's reporting that at the same time, the amount of high school seniors who support keeping marijuana illegal is at an all time low, right at 50 percent. There are a lot of interesting bits of data on this one, so I'd swing over for the full dive in. But one of the more striking items is how fast the support for legalization has risen among young people. In 2006, just 27 percent of all high school seniors were in favor of cannabis legalization. Now it's almost half. That's big progress. We pop out to Illinois for our final top story today, where on Friday, the state general assembly passed SB 336, a bill allowing people with prescriptions for opioid based painkillers to automatically qualify for medical marijuana recommendations. We've touched on this storyline before as Illinois lawmakers search for ways to reduce the harms of the ongoing opioid crisis. The bill has already passed the state Senate and now heads to the desk of Governor Bruce Rauner for his final consideration. Those are the top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Ease, California's top one-stop website for legal marijuana delivery. Ease.com, spelled E-A-Z-E, is, of course, where you can go to place an order for legal California marijuana products for delivery, but it's also a fantastic place to go for valuable bits of industry insight and analysis developed by the editorial and analytical team over at Ease. Ease is sitting on a very large sales data pipe, which they properly aggregate and anonymize before setting their numbers and writing wizards free on it who parse out information, knowledge, and wisdom to be shared up at ease.com. If you could benefit from having a better understanding of cannabis consumers, then you really need to check out all that's up for offer over at ease.com. Just open up ease.com and scroll down a touch past the ordering box and sales items to find their treasure trove of editorial and analytical gold. Big, big thanks to everyone over at ease for all the support. All right, time for the blitz. The Portland Press Herald is reporting that the Office of Maine's Attorney General sent a letter to the organizers of a medical marijuana trade show ordering them to shut down a tent that has been set up every year for the past seven years to allow medical patients to consume cannabis during the show. 
The homegrown main event took place this weekend in the state's capital of Augusta and normally has a special separate tent set up for card carrying medical marijuana patients to use vaporizers in. In a letter sent last week to the show's organizers, the Office of Maine Attorney General Janet Mills cited the state's indoor air and smoking laws for the ordered shutdown. The Press Herald is reporting that on Saturday, a number of trade show attendees lit up where the tent would have been in protest, though no arrests or police troubles were reported. CBC News out of Canada has a great story up about a young 23-year-old entrepreneur who just secured one of the limited number of legal marijuana dispensary business licenses to be issued by the Canadian province of Saskatoon. Sierra Simon Schubach is a business student about to graduate who worked on her dispensary business plan for a university class and who handled the sometimes tricky business of applying for the license without the use of any kind of professional consultants. I'm a big fan of young entrepreneurs, so I'd definitely swing over for this inspirational read. KCAW has a good story up that provides some more background and context for Alaska's newest marijuana control board member, Sitka Police Chief Jeff Ankerfelt, who has grabbed a spot in the top headlines a few times recently for his seemingly progressive take on the matter of cannabis legalization. This story is a good one to both read and listen to as KCAW recorded their interview with Police Chief Ankerfelt. New Cannabis Ventures picked up on the news that the Vanguard Mutual Fund, the world's largest mutual fund company, has just under $50 million in holdings in legal Canadian marijuana stocks. The cannabis stocks are a small portion of Vanguard's $110 billion developed market index fund, which has shares from Afria, Canopy Growth, and Aurora Cannabis, but the fact that they have any at all is notable. And $47 million, the current value of Vanguard's marijuana stocks, isn't really chump change, even if it is small in comparison to the overall fund. Marijuana.com has a good interview up with Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Viragosa, who is currently running to be the governor of California, in which they discuss a number of cannabis-related issues. California's big, so you should read and watch this one, even if you're not a Golden Stater yourself. Kyle Yeager over at Marijuana Moments picked up a twofer for the day with a good comprehensive write-up of how things are looking in Oklahoma ahead of a vote on June 26th on the matter of legalizing medical marijuana. This is another one I'd pop open for the full dive in. And finally for today, congratulations are in order for a number of friends of mine, including a number of our own regulars here at MJ Today Media, as the National Cannabis Industry Association just held an election to fill half of its 18 board seats. Of the nine members just elected, six were incumbent board members, including Marijuana Today host and regular Chris Crane and infrequent regular Troy Dayton. The three new members elected were Michael Steinmetz, my friend Mark Passerini of the Ohm of Medicine, and Marijuana Today regular Taylor West. Pop over to New Cannabis Ventures to see the full list of the nine new NCIA board members. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at MJ Today Daily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. What's the difference between an elephant and a T-Rex? One remembers, the other dismembers. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Ease, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser strengths of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.